Now listen, let me just say this right now. Let me just start with this. <clears throat> I make absolutely no apologies of what's going to happen today. Hallelujah. I heard the ladies' gathering was good, was really good. Yeah, so good? Yeah? Chelsea Rample brought the word. Now, I need to know, who thought it would be a good idea for men to bring food to a men's gathering? What's, what renaissance man thought that we'd actually make food? There's going to be a stack of pizzas and wings and chips. That's all that's going to show up at this thing. That is, that is going to be the entirety. Fellas, it's okay to just bring a pizza. Shaba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is very good. We're finishing up our spiritual revival message series today. And um, we figured we'd finish it up with spiritual revival. Amen. And so we figure that some people are going to get touched in, in a pretty significant way today. And we believe that you're going to get freed of some things. Does that sound good? Amen. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would come like you promised. And you will pour out your spirit. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen, 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 amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 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 Now, now, you couldn't have started my time already. Come on now. Come on, time people. Give some grace to the man. In 1738, John Wesley... Um, John Wesley was a minister. He's an Anglican minister from, from England. And John Wesley had sailed to the United States to be a missionary. And uh, uh, on his trip back across the Atlantic to uh, England, uh, there was a horrible storm. And the storm was so rough, people were worried that the ship was going to go down. And uh, he was there on the ship, very scared. And uh, there was a group of Moravians who were on the ship also. They were Moravian uh, missionaries. And the Moravians were known for their prayer in the United States. And the Moravians asked John Wesley, they said, why are you worried? Don't you have the light of Christ in your heart? And he was struck that he did not have an assurance of his salvation. He was a missionary, and yet he did not have an assurance of his salvation. And he actually made it through that. Uh, storm, and many of you know the story, uh, he went back to England and uh, he was in a meeting. And at the meeting, uh, while someone was introducing uh, Romans chapter 8, here's what he wrote in his journal. He said, as I wrote about the introduction to Romans chapter 8, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did, tr he felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation. And an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. So John Wesley had this conversion experience. He had an experience with the Holy Spirit. And out of that, of course, birthed the Methodist movement in the Methodist church that came out of Wesley. And Wesley, of course, uh, had a method. The method was get the Holy Ghost. That's where the Methodist comes from. The method was get the Holy Ghost. You get set apart from sin, and you get set apart for God. They called this uh, being perfected, and it was the perfectionist movement. They believed that you could be saved just through believing in your mind that Jesus Christ was Lord, but they believed that the Holy Spirit would do another work and come into your heart and perfect you. And out of this perfectionist movement birthed the holiness movement. Now, the holiness movement believed that since Jesus Christ is the Holy One, if you really receive Him, you receive the spirit of holiness and you'll be set apart from your sin entirely. So uh, they believed in salvation and they believed in being perfected. And, and now in the perfectionist movement, they believe that that God would actually make you holy. And one of the leaders of this movement, Joseph King in the 1800s, he was born in uh, 1869. His grandfather uh, was a slave owner, uh, though he uh, had a more progressive uh, mindset. And he had the radical idea that everybody in Christ is equal. 
Can you imagine that amazing uh, revelation that came to somebody who's a Christian? Everybody in Christ is equal. And uh, his grandfather owned slaves uh, in his, um, and fought in the Civil War. His father was a sharecropper, uh, and he grew up not a, really a Christian at all. And uh, he had heard the gospel and believed, but actually nothing had happened to him internally. And uh, he went to a meeting one day uh, in a church service, <clears throat> and, uh, and he was about 19 at the time. And he went to this church service, and this is what he wrote about it. He said he had a mystical experience one day while sitting in church. He said it was an event that he interpreted as God's full cleansing of sin from his life. In his autobiography, he says, As I seated myself, an unexpected, strange, and to me, a blessing thing took place. Some invisible hand instantly placed my whole being into the hand of God. A marvelous change was wrought in me. I found my heart filled with light, love, and glory. I seemingly was taken out of myself and thought I was within a few feet of the gates of heaven. When I came to myself, I was standing in the aisle in silence. Now, he went home after that service convinced that he had been sanctified, as they called it, called it then. And he went to his mom and he told his mom, Hey, mom, today in service, I got sanctified. And like all mothers everywhere would say, she replied, oh, you know you're not sanctified. And he said, no, no, no. What God did in my heart today, I know is real and no man can take it from me. Say amen. 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 And so out of this, out of this holiness movement uh, in the 1800s uh, birthed the Pentecostal movement. And so we had um, the perfectionist movement, then the holiness movement, and the Pentecostal movement in the late uh, 1800s, beginning in the early 1900s, it was an outpouring of the spirit that was most famously happened at Azusa Street Mission in Los Angeles. And in this, uh, and in this outpouring, people would get filled with the spirit and we get, would begin to speak in tongues. Now, in the perfectionist movement, you, weren't, you didn't really get the Holy Ghost unless you had an assurance that he was with you. And in the holiness movement, you hadn't received the Holy Ghost unless you began living a holy lifestyle. And in the Pentecostal movement, you hadn't received the Holy Ghost unless you began to speak in tongues. And men always seem to like to have to have some sort of measuring stick of what God has done. God isn't as interested in that. And so in the Pentecostal movement, people began to speak in tongues and uh, and, and, and some tongues that were known and some tongues that were unknown. It's glossolalia and xenolalia. There is known tongues and unknown tongues. And people would get the Holy Ghost on them and they will walk into a Korean church, preach the gospel in Korean, a language they had never learned. And the Holy Ghost would follow and people would be baptized in the Spirit. Pretty neat. I'd like to see that. I don't know about you. That'd be pretty cool. Amen. Yeah, I'm down for that. And so... And so now we had the Pentecostal movement, and the, and, the, and the high water mark of spirituality was that you spoke in tongues. And later, uh, people began to operate in gifts of healing and signs and wonders. And now we went on from being baptized in the Spirit, which is what the Pentecostals believed happened. At the Pentecostal movement, you were baptized in the Spirit and began to spoke in tongues. And now as the, as the new miracles, signs, and wonders began to happen on an increasing level, the ministers now said that you got baptized in fire after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. My point in all this is people like to try to figure God out through external measure. As the 1900s went on, in the late 1900s, God began to do something new by His Holy Spirit. He began to work a deep work of love in people's hearts. And uh, this happened uh, somewhere around, uh, most famously in, in Toronto, but uh, this new movement began to happen where people would have these intense, intense experiences with the love of God. Now, unlike the earlier movements of the holiness movement, the Pentecostal movement, and the, um, the, the perfectionist movement, and even the baptized in fire, signs and wonders movement, there was no outward physical evidence of this baptism. Instead, there was a deep, penetrating inner work of the Spirit, of the love of Father God. And people would encounter Holy Spirit 
and all kind of craziness would be happening in the room. The room would look like it would explode. It looked like a madhouse. It looked like, uh, it looked like, uh, like the enemy was at work. But the leaders of this movement were wise in that they didn't look at the manifestation. Instead, they looked for the fruit of the Spirit in people's lives. They had no measuring stick of what God was doing outwardly, only inwardly. And people would come with the testimony that once they had been touched by God, a deep love had been birthed in their heart, a love for God, a love for Jesus, a love for other people, a love for the lost, and even a love for themselves as being children of God. And unlike the earlier movements, this movement of the Holy Spirit didn't spark networks of churches. It didn't spark uh, doctrinal statements and creeds. Instead, this move of the Holy Spirit was like leaven in many, many, many streams, in many, many church networks. Till today, when you listen to the worship of today, you don't hear the old songs about being scared that God is going to come and kill us. Please make me holy. Instead, now you hear all the songs are about the love of God the love of the Father, because this move has penetrated every charismatic move all over the planet. This is a stream that we come from. And the point is this, God has always, always wanted intimate relationship with people. Now, that doesn't preach as good because you don't get to be judgmental when you're in that movement. And spirit-filled people love to exercise the judgment of God when he's always wanted us to exercise his grace and love. I find it easier to be judgmental than loving in my flesh. But it's hard for me to be judgmental when I'm in the presence of God because his love so breaks down every barrier I have in my heart and actually uh, has transformed my life and my ministry in significant ways. Some people get very upset that you don't get to call God angry anymore that you don't get to call him mad, that you don't get to say that he's going to come and kill people. And uh, the, the Pentecostal movement, uh, the Pentecostal movement was birthed uh, in, in the early 1900s. And, and the message was, if you don't accept this theology of this baptism of the Spirit, God is going to come and destroy the city. That was a, that was a prophecy that was given at the Azusa Street Mission. The next day, a horrendous earthquake hit San Francisco, and a great fire happened, and many people believed that that was the work of the hand of God, and therefore God has begun judging the nation because they had not received this Pentecostal baptism. And soon, he's going to come back and kill everybody who hadn't believed. Now, that's been over 100 years. At this point, we can say that was a false prophecy. That eschatology, that end-time belief, has clearly been proven false. God is not, like, in heaven, angry, being held back by the angels. No, let me go. Let me go, like some wrestling theatrics. Like, he really could get loose if he wanted to, but, oh, you're lucky they're holding me. It might just be that the latest revelation of God is who he really is, and he's love. And the goal is, of course, to be holy. Of course, the goal is to be saved. Of course, the goal is to live a life free of sin. But instead of that being a performance, it actually becomes an inward work that works its way outward. Amen? So, do I believe in holiness? Oh, yeah, I believe in holiness. But what has the holiness movement produced? It's produced a bunch of rules for people that they can check off a box to prove that they're holy. Was the Pentecostal movement birth? A bunch of people who pray in tongues real loud to prove they've been filled. What is the last movement birth? People who love God and love people. And that's supposed to be the work of the Spirit on the earth. And that's always been God's mission. This all started in the garden. The garden was not an accident, you know. The garden wasn't like he had no better idea. He made a place and lived with his creation. Think about that. That was his idea. Make a place that I can live with my creation. And we know that he lived with God and God lived with man and, and Adam and Eve and they sinned and it separated them from God and God at that moment, birthed the plan of redemption. If you read Genesis chapters 1 through 3, he birthed the plan of redemption. And so, and just kind of recap, last week we talked about 
the garden in God's presence. And we talked about Jacob who was running from God and in the middle of nowhere, just at a rock, he encountered God and he said, this is the house of God. This, this, Bethel, this is the house of God because God is present here. No buildings, no band, didn't even have Hillsong. They just had the Spirit of God upon them. This is the house of God. And later, Jacob, <clears throat> Jacob birthed children and the lineage went on and eventually the children were of, of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were bound and Moses led them out of captivity. And, and God said to, uh, said to Moses, listen, build something, build something so I can, I can, I can live with you. This was God's idea that he wanted to live with people. In Exodus chapter 25, he says, let them construct a sanctuary for me that I may dwell among them. God wants you to build a temple so that he can dwell among you. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was in this day and age, I would be in one of these glowing tents. That would be me. I would have front row seat to the glory of God descending upon the temple. Amen? Amen. Some of y'all will be in the back. I would be in the front, outside my tent, trying to talk to Jesus. I'd be like, I got a tent too, God, right over here. Now, anytime you see this, people are just fascinated by the light that's upon the tent, but God is concerned with the glory in the tent. That's where God encounters man, the glory. And he says in Exodus 40, verse 34, then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord, hear me, filled the tabernacle. And last week we went on to talk about once they finally came into the promised land, they built a temple for God. And, and uh, this is a picture we took uh, that, you know, that um, uh, we decided that Solomon took with a drone of the actual <laughs> temple. And uh, it's beautiful. Everything's clean and no people, which is a weird for a city. Uh, and, and, and in this temple, they built this ornate building for God. They said, God has to have an ornate building. Give us an ornate building to build for you. And God gave them plans for a building. And, and the building, the purpose of the building was not so that they could have a bigger temple than everyone else. The purpose of the building was to protect the glory of God, which would be on the inside of the Holy of Holies. And when they dedicated that temple to him in 1 Kings chapter 8, it says it happened that when the priests came from the holy place, the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Can you imagine what that day was like? It says that as they brought the ark in, they slaughtered so many animals as an act of worship, you couldn't count the number. Now, I'm thankful we don't have to do that, but the heart of worship that would give abundantly an exuberant offering of worship to God, just to imagine what that was like as a whole nation of God's people were ready for the return of His presence. Can you imagine for a couple hundred years we hadn't seen Him, and then one day He promised us, if you do this, I'll come. The expectation we would have and the awe that would be upon us. And he came and he filled the temple. And, uh, and, and we know this was the temple of God and, uh, because God filled it. Then, of course, as, as time went forward, uh, the temple system, uh, God left the temple and Jesus was born. And Jesus was the temple of God on earth. We know that Jesus was the temple of God on earth. We know that Holy Spirit had left the temple the glory had left. We know that uh, several uh, of the emperors had gone into the Holy of Holies and seen nothing, which is not possible if God still inhabited the temple. Are you with me? Jesus came filled, filled with the Spirit. The glory was upon Him, and He was filled with the Spirit. He was the temple of God on earth. And we talked last week a couple of the, a couple of the things that we can know that demonstrate the temple of God is there's the presence of God, and we know that the presence of God was upon Jesus. The Holy Spirit descended upon him as a dove, and we know healings happened wherever he went, and people were set free wherever he went, and revelation would happen, and angelic activity always happens over the, the temple of God and within the temple of God, and we know that the voice of God is present, and Jesus, of course, was a prophet in the line of Moses. He rebirthed the prophetic ministry of Moses. 
that Joshua was not able to pick up. And so we know that Jesus was a temple of God on earth. And we know that the temple of God on earth is a meeting place of the divine and the natural realm. Can you say amen? The temple of God is a meeting place of the divine in the natural realm. Now, us spirit-filled Christians, we like to say, you know, I don't go to church. I am the church. Yeah, that's great and all, but there still is church in the Bible. There's a meeting place where, where, where saved people come together, where the called out ones come together, and God comes, and He empowers, and He equips, and where one can set a thousand to fly, two can set ten thousand to fly. And we come together on Sunday morning, and I bet y'all can do better than that. I really do. I bet y'all can do better than that. Yeah. Hallelujah. And we come together on Sunday morning not to look cute, not just to fill our brain, but to come into the presence of God and to be equipped with the power of God and to, to commune with Him, that we can rekindle our love with Him and that we can get re-energized by Him and we can hear what the Spirit is saying and we can receive the ministry of the angels and that God can come and abide among us and amazing things can happen so that our temple can be rekindled with fire for the world. I want to tell you, if you feel like, man, I want to encounter the presence of God, the easiest way to do that is through worship. The easiest way to encounter God is in worship. It's all over the Bible. Next week, we're going to, do a, we're going to begin a, a few weeks a few week series on praise and worship as a context of a spiritual revival. Yeah, if you're going to woohoo, go ahead, let's do it. Yeah, it's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it. Corey's going to kick us off uh, next week. I'll be on the front row taking notes, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Listen, Jesus gave us worship for a reason. God gave us worship for a reason. He gave us worship for a reason. I'm trying here, Corey. I, was, I almost preached his message last, year, last, 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 last service, and I'm, I'm trying, trying not to. But let me tell you something. Unless your life is perfect, you need to be in corporate worship. Yes. Amen. And if you're not in corporate worship, your life is not perfect. Amen. We got about 35 40 minutes, including the announcements of worship a week. Those need to be like precious to you. That needs to be valuable. That needs to be more valuable than getting the last bit of makeup on. That needs to be more valuable than getting three extra minutes of sleep. That needs to be like, I need to get where I know the presence is for this week. I need to get in praise and worship. I need to be there lifting up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 It's, I mean, it's, I, just, I just see all throughout the Psalms, breakthrough in worship, Corey. I just see it all over. I come into worship saying, I'm like, Jesus, what am I going to see today? Yeah. Hallelujah. I like to find a song that the anointing is on for my life. Yeah. I play that junk on repeat. Yeah. Repeat. I got apps on my computer that will, will loop them videos. People come in here. Are you still listening to this song? I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm listening to this song. Stay right there, Anastasia. You're good. You're good. You can just stay right there. They just put that junk on repeat. Repeat. The anointing of God floods my life as I do. Like, you got to find out where the anointing is. You got to stay there. You got to find where the anointing of God is. You got to stay there. Come on. The anointing will fall on some people today. I need you to hear me. It's going to fall on some people today. And you need to stay there. People get touched by God, they get off the ground too fast. Like, God put me here. Why would I move? People join the church, oh, it's good, presence of God is there and all this is great, but you know, I just want, yeah, why don't you ask God what he wants? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm all off track here. All right, I'm doing better. At Pentecost, we were empowered to be the person God always wanted us to be, filled with his spirit, filled with his spirit. This is about to get very good. <clears throat> When Jesus came, Jesus completed the ministry of Moses. Moses prayed, if you remember, in Numbers chapter 11, he prayed, I would that all the Lord's people were prophets. Brandon, that's me telling a verse right now. You can put that one up. I would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. That ministry didn't get passed on to Joshua. That ministry got passed on to Jesus. Jesus re reawakened the prophetic mantle of Moses. When, he, when Jesus walked the earth, the Spirit of God was on him, and he was filled with the Spirit. And when he was crucified, he came back from the dead. He said, it's better that I go because I will send forth the Spirit. See, when the Spirit was upon Jesus, it was limited locationally to where Jesus was. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he sent his spirit, fulfilling the prophecy of Moses that the, all, the spirit could be on all people and all God's people could be prophets. Can you say amen? amen. 
Hallelujah. In order for you to be the temple of God, it's not just something you declare. You have to be a meeting place with God for the world. You have to be a place of meeting between the divine and the natural realm. I'm going to tell you a real quick uh, divine appointment, uh, but for some of you, this may be offensive. And so if you're offended, I just want to say, forgive me up front, all right? I might mess with your theology a little bit, but I feel like the Spirit is with me, so I'm going to go forward anyways. I have a tattoo that I received after getting saved. Are you still with me? Are you still with me? Okay. It's true. Okay. I actually have several now that you've accepted that one. I see people leaving. Rich, I'm saved. I prom- oh, no, you're sitting down. Okay, good. Good, good. Okay. Okay, good. Whew. Thought I lost him. I, the future governor, I don't want <clears throat> to. So, um, so I have this tattoo on my left calf. Maybe you've seen it. It just says this, Jesus is alive. It's not fancy. No fancy script. You don't look like it's been airbrushed. You can't look at it and say, like, is, is that a map of Europe? Or does that say something? Like, it just, it's just plain. Jesus is alive. I think it, you know, just kind of makes sense to me, right? Just, that's pretty straightforward. And so this guy says to me um, the other day, he says to me, wow, that tattoo. I like that. Jesus is alive. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, what does that mean? I was like, I was like it means Jesus He's alive. He says, yeah, you know, I see all these, you know, tattoos. He's like on a cross and he's dead. But yours says he's alive. I was like, yeah, because he's actually alive. He's like, he's like, so did he get like reincarnated? I was like, no, because reincarnation means like that's a belief that you could die and then you somehow are floating and then you get birthed into something or someone else. And Jesus, actually the same body that died, actually is alive again. And he's still alive. Thus the tattoo, Jesus is alive. And so he says to me, and so he says to me, you know, how, 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 how does that work? I said, well, actually, Jesus, he said, he said, I said, well, actually, Jesus Uh, He walked the earth as a man with the Spirit of Christ upon him. Spirit of God was on him and in him. And he said it was better that he would go uh, and he had to pay for the sins of man. So he allowed himself to be sacrificed. And then he was born from, he was brought up from the dead, alive, that he had paid for the sins of the world. Then after a certain period of time, he flew up into heaven so that he could release his spirit onto all those who call upon his name. And then he says to me, he says to me, man, I just believe like if Jesus was alive today, we'd just be like friends. I believe I could just be friends with him. I think he'd be a good guy to hang out with. I said, good news. He's actually alive today. And you can be friends with him right now. Like it is so simple. It's very, I mean, like, 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 I, I, like, I want to live as a meeting place between the divine and the natural realm. I don't have arguments. I'm talking about a tattoo, and the Holy Ghost is drawing people. You don't have to get tatted to have a testimony. You just got to let people know that you know Jesus. Does that, does that make sense? Don't come next week, like, with the Revival Life thing on your neck. That's not necessary. And please, nothing on your face. Just please, for any reason. Please. Please, no, not, don't put holy on your cheek or just don't do it. <clears throat> Here's the truth, though, that people have not really grasped. The Holy Spirit was at work in Christ. He's at work in us. And uh, it doesn't take a long time to find him in the Bible. As a matter of fact, if you crack open your Bible, you get to verse 2 and you find Holy Spirit. The second verse, and, and we see it here, it says the earth was form, formless and void, and darkness was, wow, over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Now, we know that the earth was in chaos. It was in chaos, and there was no form, and, and, and the Father had a will, and Jesus spoke it, and Holy Spirit did it, and Holy Spirit began to move on the earth. And here's what I want you to get from this very briefly. Uh, Holy Spirit brings chaos into order. Let me say it again. Holy Spirit brings chaos into order. He brings life from barren places. The earth was barren. God breathed his spirit on it and out came life. 
He breathes life into barren places. Just like the earth was barren and Mary's womb was barren. But when the Holy Spirit comes, there's life. Some of you are in chaos for a reason. When you see chaos, I want you to ask, what would it look like? What would it look like if Holy Spirit brought order into the chaos of my marriage? What would it look like if Holy Spirit brought order into the chaos of my children's lives? What would it look like if Holy Spirit brought order into the chaos of my finances or my mentality or how I view myself or my family, how I interact with my parents? What would it look like if Holy Spirit brought order into the chaos of my city, of my, the politics of my nation? What would it look like for Holy Spirit to bring order into anywhere you say chaos? Perhaps you're in chaos because God wants to move by His Spirit through you to bring order. We really fight to get out of chaos, but sometimes God has us in chaos for a reason. And I want you to be able to start to dream big dreams about bringing order into chaos. Bring, dream big dreams. For those of you who know who are suffering because they don't know Jesus, what would it look for Holy Spirit to bring order into that chaos? All it takes is a hovering of the Spirit to reveal Jesus. It's all it takes. One revelation of Christ and it all comes into order. It's all it takes is one revelation by the Spirit. See, for, for, for Spirit-filled Christians, there's no separation between the sacred and the secular. There's no, it's not like we go to church and then we leave the sacred area. For, for Spirit-filled Christians, we, we are the temple of God, and everywhere we go becomes a sacred space. Everywhere we go becomes a sacred space, and all it requires is you to be mindful of the presence of God on you and in you. It's all it takes you to be aware of the presence of God on you and in you. I'm going to show you two videos today, and I'm not sure how many of you have seen these videos in the past, uh, but it should be a fun day. Uh, The first one, we were were, um, in Mexico, excuse me, we were in Nicaragua. Nicaragua has been very good to me. Uh, There's a lot of chaos that Holy Spirit wants to bring order to. And so we like to go just walking down dirt streets and just pray for the sick and lead people to Christ and just have good times, right? And so um, one time we were in these mountains outside of uh, Managua, about two hours outside of Managua, maybe an hour outside of Managua, to the uh, southwest of Managua, excuse me, southeast of Managua. And um, and as, you know, when you go to witness to people, you go to houses, you can't roll too deep because it gets intimidating, right? If 10 people show up at your door, it's, you know, you're less likely to open the door and talk to people, right? Like the the walls go up. So we like to do it in like twos or threes. And, and so we're on this mountain and uh, we're, we're ministering and these kids started following us around. And uh, the kids were kind of like, we'd show up to the door and they'd start giggling and laughing and, 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 and kind of being a distraction. And we're like, there's a problem, Lord. And we're like rebuking the chaos and we're like praying that the Lord would bring order. And as we walked, more and more kids started following us. And then we kind of thought, what, what if God might be in some of this? Here we are looking for people to minister to, and we have a crowd following us. Hmm. Hmm. Perhaps. 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 And so real quick, if you could throw this up. And America is a thousand miles away. America, mil millas de este lugar. We have to take a plane all the way here. I don't even speak Spanish. That's why Jesus sent him with me. Do you know why Jesus sent us here? Does anybody know why? Does anybody know why? Anybody? Want to guess? You guess. Divina. It's not easy to minister to kids in a foreign country when you don't speak the language. And they don't want to See. Jesus sent us here to tell you about him. Jesus nos mandó aquí para de él. He wanted you to know, listen. Oh, yay. Oh, yay. Listen, I came all the way from America to tell you this. Vinimos de América para decirle esto. So it's very important. Es bien importante. You ready? Están listos. Jesus Jesús. is going to come from heaven Va a venir del cielo. and touch you in your heart. Y tocar tu corazón. Ven. Jesus is going to come and touch you in your heart. Jesús va a tocar tu corazón. Ven. Ven. Rápido. Rápido. Jesus sent us from America. And he comes. Come on. Because he wants to touch you in your heart. He wants to live inside of you. 
No. And uh, I'll, I'll baptize you in a minute. This kid asked me, can I get water baptized? He okay. just walks up to me. So we're going to say a prayer together. Vamos a orar juntos. You know what? You know what Jesus said? That we all do things that are wrong. Que todos hemos hecho algo malo. Has anybody ever done something wrong? Alguien aquí ha hecho algo malo? We Yo all sí. have. Todos. And you todos know, aquí. God has to punish people who do things that are wrong. Pero Dios tiene que... Here comes the lady looking for someone to witness to. Nothing to see here. Pray for us. As you go. Okay. No, you can go. She can go. No, you can go. Just pray for us. Okay. Just, just pray for us. So listen. Oye. 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 Okay, listen. Oye. Mi amiga. ¿Qué pasó? Okay, now. Ahora. Jesus said, Jesus dijo, when people do things wrong, hace algo they malo, have to be punished. Tiene que ser but God Dios said that I want to give them life. Dijo que les dar vida. And so we're going to say a prayer so God forgives us. Vamos a hacer una para que Dios I have no perdone. idea if this is working. <laughs> so we're going to say a prayer, okay? <laughs> vamos a orar juntos. Is that okay? Está bien. Is that okay? Está bien. Va bien? Bien. Va bien? Vamos a orar juntos. Va bien? Está bien. Okay. okay. Everybody hold hands. Todos, sosténganse la mano. Mi amiga, ven. Everybody hold hands. Ven. Okay? You know we have a video hands. of this because someone just happened to be videoing with their phone. Now hold hands. <laughs> <laughs> Todos. Okay. All right? Uh, everybody, uh, repeat. Todos repitan lo que va a decir. We're going to say a prayer to Jesus. Vamos a orar a Jesús. Okay? Listos? And we're going to ask him to forgive us. Listos? Vamos a preguntarle que nos perdone. Okay? 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 Amen? Okay? 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 Amen? 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 Everybody close your eyes and say this prayer. Todos cierren los ojos y repitan detrás mío. No looking around. No miren. Repeat after me. Real loud. Bien, bien alto. Okay? Okay. Let me hear you be loud. Venga, escucha. Quiero escuchar ser alto. Ba! Loud. Alto. Venga, quiero escuchar sus voces. Ready? Say this after me. Say, Jesus. I don't know what I'm doing here. Jesus. Louder. Más alto, Jesús. Jesús. Más alto, Jesús. I did things that were wrong. Yo he hecho cosas malas. Forgive me. Perdóname. Give me life. Give me life. I believe in Jesus. Yo creo en Jesús. Él murió por mí. Él resucitó de nuevo. El resucitó por mí. El resucitó por mí. Pero en voz alta, el resucitó por mí. El resucitó por mí. Wow. Y ahora vive en mí. Ahora vive en mí. Límpiame. 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 At this point, I realize Andres is an evangelist, and he works with kids. I don't even tell him what to say. Para vivir para ti. Para no ser nada malo. Vivir para ti. Para mí. Mis amigos. Mi familia. Y todo este lugar. Para poder vivir para ti. En poder. En amor. Amo a Jesús. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Maybe Holy Spirit has you in chaos because he wants to move through you to bring order. Maybe God wants to use you as the temple of God to bring order to chaos in this world. Maybe for such a time as this, he has brought you forth. And he's doing a work in your heart of love so that you could see what he's trying to do through you. Is it possible? What do you think? Is it is it possible? The presence of God in our lives enables every spirit-filled believer. It enables all of our activities, everything we do to be charismatic and to be a function of the Holy Spirit for everywhere we go. It is only limited by our awareness of His presence on us and in us. <clears throat> now, I'm going to stretch you a little further here. I don't know how many of you have seen this video. There's a scripture in the New Testament that quotes the Old Covenant. 
And he says, and of the angels, he says, is in Hebrews 1, 7, who makes his angels winds and his minister flame of fire. He makes his angels wind, his ministers flame of fire. That fire in the Old Covenant always talks about the Spirit of God coming to purify. And John the Baptist promised that Jesus would baptize you in the Holy Ghost and in the Holy Ghost and fire. And he says literally that he would make his ministers a flaming fire. Literally that you would have the presence and power of Holy Spirit upon you to change situations through miraculous encounters with God in you. And we all kind of believe that. That other part about he makes his angels winds, that sometimes might stretch some minds. But it just so happens we found ourselves in Nicaragua another time. And uh, I don't know what you call it. I don't know if it's really the jungle or what. But if, you know, talking about a, a great area of land where there's no roads or anything, just some paths and trees and brush and jungle, right? We would go through the paths until we come upon a little encampment. And in the encampment, there'd be like little houses that, you know, ish, right? Like these huts that they live in out of scrap. And uh, a family would live around uh, an encampment. And uh, we'd go in there and we'd preach the gospel and we'd heal the sick. And, and uh, everybody on our mission trip does. We, I don't believe we've ever seen people go on our mission trips not heal the sick and lead people to Christ. And as a matter of fact, our last one, there was this, yeah, no, that's good. Now, our last one... There was this bizarre anointing for, what was it? Was it scoliosis? Yeah, it was, scoli it was bent backs, right? What was that? You remember? I think it was scoliosis. No, no, was it scoliosis? Strokes. 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 People who had strokes, it was bizarre. It was like they were multiplying in our area. And we saw so many people healed of strokes. It was bizarre. People who couldn't move half their body, hey. like barely like with a cane. And then they like, we just saw it. Like people who'd never seen a miracle before in their life. I remember one point we were at dinner and it was like we were tired. And Isaac saw a guy checking in where we were eating. And he gets, he tells me, hey, look, there's a guy with a stroke. I was like, I'm kind of tired. <laughs> and so we got Chris Glansky and they went and they prayed for the guy. And the guy got healed. It was pretty. Anyway, so, anyway, so, um. So we get upon this encampment, and we pray for this lady, and this lady who had, I don't remember what she had, but she got healed of something. And then uh, someone had a word of knowledge that there was a curse on this entire area, and there was sickness because of this curse that had been on this area. And um, <clears throat> marriage in Nicaragua is kind of fluid, we'll say, right? Well, it's just kind of a fluid concept. And... Um, and so this woman, uh, we had a word of knowledge, and it was like, who's a woman? We're asking, who's the person who has a curse on them? Who's the person? Which is a weird way to introduce yourself to people, right? Like, hi, who's the one with the curse, right? And, uh, and, and we're just keep asking, and eventually they were like, her, right? They were pointing out, her, she's the one with the curse. Okay, hey, is there a curse? Uh, what happened? She's like, what? Curse? I don't know. What? What curse? What happened? Well, Actually, I was, uh, you know, my husband, his wife put a curse on me and she sacrificed some animal over there underneath the water and now there's all this stuff. And we're like, oh, the curse, excellent. And so we said, hey, God would only tell us something if he wants to heal it because God's not a gossip, amen? He only reveals something if he wants to make it better, right? And so uh, we began to pray for her. I think we have that video well, hey, ready to go to. Jesus tells us stuff. This is her here. And this is her camp. And he only tells us stuff because he wants to heal it. Y él solo nos dice para que sea algo sea sano. And he would only tell us about a curse if he wants to break it. See, she understands that. She's got, she's got kind of the brain behind the operation here. And then she was kind of matriarch. Tell, well, Jesus here. would only tell us about the curse if he wants to break it. And he just told me that she had a curse. I was standing right there, and that's why I asked about the curse. You see? 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 Yeah. Let me give you a cheat code. So now he's going to break the curse. Look for the wind when the Lord starts to move. Is that good? Is that okay? Tell, ask him, is that okay? Está bien. Está bien. Break the curse? Good? Good. Okay, ask them. Yes? yes. Break the curse is good? We want some agreement here. We don't want any agreement with the wicked, so we're just going to continue to ask this until we feel like some, there's some agreement here, right? We're going to break the curse. Can we break the curse over this area right here? Can we break that curse right now? Yes? Good? Amen. Yes? Amen. Like the curse Let's do it. Ready? I would. Ready? Do you believe Jesus. that Jesus Christ was born from a virgin? Don't let her touch her. Okay. Mary was, a, Mary was a virgin and had Jesus. Do you believe that? 
that Jesus never sinned. Que Jesús nunca pecó. He lived a good life. Que él vivió una vida buena. He died on a cross for your sins. Que él murió en la cruz por tus pecados. That his blood came down on that cross. Que la sangre de él cayó sobre esa cruz. And he came back from the dead. Y que él vino y resucitó de los muertos. And he walked the earth. Y él caminó la tierra. And then he went up into heaven. Y él ascendió hacia el cielo. Do you believe this? And you want to keep asking that until she actually says, yes, I believe this. Sí. Say, I tell her, yes, I believe. Tell her, I believe. Diga, ¿lo crees de corazón? Con la profecía con la boca, ¿lo crees? Sí. Yes. So I believe that Jesus has saved me. Put that Listen out. Listen for the wind. Watch ¿Crees this. que Jesús te ha salvado? Tell her to say it. I diga, believe Jesus. Diga, yo creo que Jesús me ha salvado. Yo creo que Jesús me ha salvado. Woo, there we go. Fire in the name of Jesus. Yes. Come on, watch this. Whoa. The curse comes off right now. There it is. <laughs> Fire. Of... There we go, right there. Wow, right there. Right there, there it is. There it is. Wow. Woo, bam, right there. Bam, right there. Whoa. Fire right there. Ah, whoa, yeah, there we go. Come Thank on. you, Jesus. <laughs> We just got to clean up right there real good. Listen, he makes his angels wins. Todo and his servants. Salga. Yeah, we just, you know, get all the, come on, go give it up. <clears throat> Holy Spirit is the power of God. So wherever the believer goes is an opportunity for an experience with God for both the person you're talking to and the one who is talking. Shakaba. Shakaba. Uh, we're going we're gonna to see God do something here in one second. As the temple of God, we've demonstrated that God, come on, that God wants to move in and through his people. Amen? And today, some people are about to get set free after an encounter with the living God. Amen? Stand with me if you would. The Bible says that we overcome him with the blood of the lamb and the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. And so often the church, come on, so often the church has misread that to say that I overcome him just in my warfare with the blood of the lamb and the word. No, no, no. With your testimony, you overcome the devil in other people's lives as well. Come on. Your testimony has the power to set people free. The word of your testimony carries the presence of God upon it. Shake up. And what is about to happen is we're about to pray. And the presence of God is going to fall in the room. And many people are about to get set free. No, this is what's happening right now. I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, this is what's about to happen. So let's just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost real quick. Thank you, Jesus. Father, Father, I have preached your word. I have faithfully preached your word as you have revealed it to me. I have shared the testimony of Jesus Christ. And I declare the blood of Jesus covers this. I declare the blood of... Mm. The blood of Jesus covers this room in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The fire of God falls in this room right now. The fire of God falls over man, every man, woman, and child in this room right now in the name of Jesus. And right now in the name of Jesus, I bind every work of the devil in this room right now. In the name of Jesus, I declare you picked the wrong day to come. You picked the wrong day. You picked the wrong day because I bind your powers right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bind your powers right now. And I bind the work of a spirit of infirmity right now. You will lose the headaches right now in the name of Jesus. I declare freedom right now in the name of Jesus. Freedom in the name of Jesus. Freedom. I command this spirit of rage to come off in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The spirit of rage comes off your people, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. The spirit of frustration, you come off in the name of Jesus. This manipulating demon that's causing pain that runs down your back and down your right leg, I command it to be loosed in the name of Jesus. Shekha, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, come on. Freedom. 
Freedom right now in the name of Jesus. Freedom right now in the name of Jesus. Freedom right now in the name of Jesus. Freedom right now. I bind that demon of poverty right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of lack, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And I loose the power of God in the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. We release the, release the power of God right now. Brain of wise, do me a favor, open the front door. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready? In the loose right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Loose right now. Loose right now in the name of Jesus. Loose. Loose in the name of Jesus. The fire of God falling all over the room. The fire of God falling. He's setting you free from oppression right now in the name of Jesus. He's setting you free from sinful powers right now. He's setting you free of sinful patterns in your life are being broken. They're being broken right now. Come on, give it to God. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Come on, he's lifting the cloud off you right now. Come on. The clouds have come on, 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 come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Fire the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost, come on. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. The cycle breaks today in the name of Jesus. Repeat after me. I am free by the blood of Jesus. I am free by the blood of Jesus. I am free by the love of my Father. I am loved. I am accepted. I am free. Free in Christ Jesus. Come on. The chains are Come on, we break it right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And all hearts are free. And all pain must go as heaven floods this place. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. There's outpouring happening right now. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost right now. If you don't pray in tongues, open your mouth and start moaning. Come on. If you're not right with God right now, say, Jesus, save me and fill me with your spirit right now. Come on. Right now. Right now. Right now. The presence of God is here. This is not some sort of psychological thing. This is the Holy Ghost of God moving upon you right now. Come on. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Open your mouth. Lift your voice. Shake up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Lift your voice. Every mouth. Come on. Open your mouth. Lift your voice. Open your mouth. Lift your voice. Cry out in the name of Jesus. Pray in tongues, come on. Shake Kaba. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So we cry. Yes, Lord Jesus, let heaven fill this place. This place. Close your eyes, lift your hands and let them flood you right now. Come on. Come on. So we Giving visions right now. He's giving visions.
decisions right now. He's showing you callings. He's showing you futures right now. The heaven is here. Heaven is here. Heaven is here. Heaven is here. The fire of God is falling in the room right now. Heaven is here. Heaven is here. Touch Jesus. Come on. Come on. Touch Jesus right now. Shake up by Senderebe. Touch Jesus right now. Come on, come on, come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Jesus this morning, what he's doing in our midst. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. 
we love you. We're praying for you, for your family, and for your week. Let's go be the church of Jesus Christ, amen? Let's go be the encounter the world needs, amen? I want you guys to grab a stack of invitation cards before you leave today as you're on your way out. You can turn the keys down a little bit, Brandon. I feel like I'm screaming. Grab a stack of invitation cards on your way out and invite somebody to church. Next week, we're starting our spiritual revival praise and worship series. Like Pastor said today, there's no easier way to connect with Holy Ghost than through worship. So bring somebody next week who needs to hear the gospel. Bring somebody next week who needs a touch from God. Amen. Let's give it up one more time for what Jesus is doing in our midst. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Meet somebody you don't know before you leave, and we'll see you next week. Calling on my